Sentinels, we are back with another Babylon's Fall video and in this video we're going to go through the new Sentinel report number 7 that was released today at 11.05. It is a pretty big one. They are going through the feedback received after version 1.1.0. They are clarifying certain things as well in regards to the power increase and the power gap and armor that was pre-150, post-150. So it's a good one. So there is a lot to go through here. If you do find this useful, hit the like button, subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell to stay up to date with all Babylon Fall content I release. Thank you to all my Patreons and my YouTube members for your continued support. You are amazing. Thank you for, so much for that. And let's get on with it. So as we start with the Sentinel report, as you see here, the first thing that they talk about is the equipment power cap. They say many players have mentioned that the maximum power level for new equipment made available with the latest update differs from that of the player's pre-existing equipment prior to the update. Players are dissatisfied with how this can render their favoured weapons and armour that they have been using obsolete. No one likes to have their time wasted. Or they might have wasted materials and conches that they have poured into improving their gear. They are sorry for these outcomes and wish to apologize for their lack of consideration towards the players and failing to offer a sufficient explanation, other than the fact that they just upgraded it and that was the end of that. To give a bit more information about the game specifications, the maximum power cap on a piece of equipment is decided by the player's power value at the point when it was obtained. So the cap on something picked up once a player's powers has increased after the update will be higher than the cap on something acquired before then. So what does this actually mean? So let's say, for example, you've got an armor piece that you've picked up and the max that on there, for example, at, let's say you are power level uh, 50, right? And the max that on there for attack is, say, 10. If you picked up that exact armor set at, say, power level 150 that you was at, the stat that you're looking at would, say, start at, say, or um, cap out at, say, 15 or 20. Now, you can upgrade that level 50 piece all the way up to 200. But the caps that are intrinsic to it do not go to the new cap. So the old gear that you have essentially is garbage. Don't bother upgrading it. Just get rid of it. Anything from 150 onwards is what you want to keep. We'll get into that a little bit more as we're going through this. There were two deciding factors for why we set the specification this way. The first, that we needed a system where things could be swapped around fairly loosely when we make adjustments to correct the overall direction of equipment capabilities as part of long-term game cycle. Essentially, balances, nerfs, buffs, that sort of thing. The second was a desire by both the development team and operations teams from the perspective of ongoing live service to let players enjoy continuously changing trends by using new equipment, essentially new methods, trying new stuff, making forcing you to play different styles or maybe just get the same gear again. But they wanted you to experience the new gear that came along. Their future policy, we are currently creating an environment where we, it will be possible to update your weapons and armor so that players can keep using a single piece of equipment. This is now our recommended approach and involves the introduction of an option to combine power levels at the forge, as well as other mechanics. On top of continuing to look at and adjust the lifespan of equipment based on both previous and future feedback, we are also aware of the issues with how long it takes to check the power limits of different gear and are working to solve that problem too. Because different equipment have different limits when it comes to the power and the problem right now they have is the power limits of one gear at a lower level is going to be drastically different to something that's at a higher level. They just scale higher and that's now causing them a problem. So they're looking to standardize that, which is a good thing. So for reference, here is a chart showing the sliding power cap applied to new equipment based on the player's current power level when it is obtained. Power level when it is obtained from 1 to 50, that is your power level, Equipment power cap is 150. So even if you boosted it to 200, the actual statistical caps would be at 150, even if the number shows 200. Now, power when obtained at 51 to 150, that is going to cap at 200. That is the current power cap now. 
So if you have got anything in between there and you're upgrading it, it will at least take you up to this update and probably somewhere between halfway through season two. Now, if you are collecting equipment that has been obtained between 151 to 200, that will take you all the way up to power cap 300. So this is now future proofing. So if you have gear right now that is really good that you've obtained after power level 151, and this is your power level, not the items that are dropping, but your power level, then that is the gear you want to keep because that will take you all the way to 300. Honestly, anything from 150 and below, I just recommend to just scrap. It's not worth keeping, break it, just get rid of it. It is useful for now, up until mid-season two, but it will not be useful going forward. Now, the critical hit race, this took a slight nerf, and in their terms, balanced is the term they're using. We have also received numerous comments about critical hit race being modified down. This issue was not a deliberate change to tone down critically critical based equipment for being too powerful, but actually arose from a bug in the process related to how critical hit rates were being calculated. Unfortunately, fixing that bug created an effect identical to if we had just lowered the ratio, essentially nerfed. So they fixed the issue, but in doing so, the issue corrected, the, corrected it, like the ratio finally normalized and went to where it should be. And well, it's enough. No matter which way you look at it, it's enough. But it's not a nerf that they deliberately implied, it's just a nerf that came with fixing the bug in present because it was broken. From our player's data, we are aware that character builds centered on the critical hit mechanics are extremely popular and wish to apologize sincerely for the disappointment caused by the feel of these kinds of builds changing drastically. So it does seem like the nerf was quite heavy. To give some more specific details of the bug, a situation was occurring where various additional enchantments made it easy to guarantee critical hits, even at lower level brackets. If the bug was waived and this state accepted as how the system should function, then not only would it effectively make the advantage of building up your critical effect level meaningless, but it would also ensure that builds which guarantee critical hits dominated the meta game. And this is something they did not want to do. This would then lead to further problems that could shorten the lifespan of the live service by reducing the scope of the play experience to be very narrow and making balancing and game incredibly difficult. Accordingly, we made the decision to fix the bug. It is a bug. They fixed the bug. That's the end of it, really. Uh, as mentioned in our live broadcast a few days ago, the core policy for going on for ongoing content tweaks in Babylon's Fall will stay unchanged in terms of having game balance based on upward adjustments rather than reductions. They want to buff and not, you know, nerf. This is something that is, you know, a part of their policy. They do not want to nerf. And this bug being fixed, though inadvertently it is a nerf, it is a fix to a bug that was currently in place that was basically making every other build type meaningless. So they kind of had to, well, they, they fixed the bug. It's the end, end, end of the story. Um, this applies to both critical rate issue two, and we will be adjusting the rate up in future updates. So they are still gonna buff the rate up in future updates to at least bring it, a make it better than what it is right now. Cause even they've noticed that the drop is quite staggering. One other area we've received feedback on is differentiating the characteristics of each weapon type. And we will continue to make further adjustments here too, in line with our guiding principle of creating a play environment with a wide variety of valid play styles. Please be patient as we work to improve all these areas. Thank you for you supporting Babylon's Fall, director Takahisa Sugiyama Platinum Games. Now I do want to add one extra thing here that's not on here that I found out today, which might actually please you people. No, there is no new weapon types coming as of the 26th of April update. However, you will be pleased to know that there is more new weapons coming as of April the 26th. So it's not new types, it hasn't been disclosed if we're going to get new divine weapons or if it's just going to be legendary weapons, but I assume there's going to be a few divine weapons thrown in there. They didn't mention any armor, so 
stay keep that in check but i am hoping that there are some armor pieces thrown in some gear sets thrown in like cosmetic ones that look nice and people will enjoy so hopefully we find out more of that nearer the 26 when there probably will be another broadcast well everyone that is it for this video i hope you've enjoyed it thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next video stay safe everyone and as always stay frosty and remain legend peace out Thanks so much for watching my video. If you look over to the left, you'll find a video that I'm recommending to you that I think you might actually enjoy. On the right, you'll see a video that is recommended by YouTube. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one, remember to always remain legend.